Hello, welcome to this session on Italian Neorealism. Neorealism which emerged in the mid 40s of the 20th century in Italian cinema and remained a dominant presence for a decade was one of the most influential moments in world cinema. It created a new grammar exploring fresh thematic terrains and aesthetic paradigms. Like other influential movements in world cinema, Italian neorealism had a lasting worldwide impact on the form and content, the very look and feel of cinema. It placed artistic creativity over technique and depiction of social realities over spectacles as fundamental factors in making films. Its strength also lay in its flexibility in adopting the available technology in production and its willingness to draw from tradition, especially the Italian realist tradition in fiction and cinema. This flexibility is also seen in the way many directors who distinguish themselves as masters of neorealism moved on to modify their idiom after the waning of the movement and the success in making films with different themes and techniques. Till the emergence of Italian neorealism, only Hollywood cinema had a global reach and influence. The rise of Italian neorealism marked the emergence of an authentic Italian cinema, freed from the shackles of both Hollywood and indigenous commercial cinema. It also signaled the arrival of a model for what came to be known later as parallel or offbeat cinema. One could describe it as the re-emergence of radical cinema after the early Soviet experiments in using cinema as a medium for presenting and discussing social problems and the freeing of the medium from the stranglehold of big business. The devastating experiences of the Second World War, which Italy and Germany lost, the post-war sense of helplessness and desperation that gripped Italian society, the impulse to offer resistance to both indigenous and foreign capitalist incursions in the film industry, the urge to make films which truly represented Italian culture, to give voice to the marginalized and underprivileged in Italian society were the principal factors which led to the emergence of neorealism in Italian cinema. Neorealism also represents Italian cinema's coming of age. For at the end of the 1930s and during the fascist regime, Italian cinema was thematically and technically ill-equipped to compete successfully with imports from Hollywood or gain substantial viewership abroad. Historical background. Before the Second World War began, Italy had some of the best studios in the world. The war destroyed many of them. Unlike Hollywood, a truly indigenous film industry was yet to develop in Italy. There were a large number of Hollywood films imported to Italy at the beginning of the 30s. As Federico Fellini, one of the most acclaimed Italian filmmakers wrote, to the generation of Italians born in the 1920s, Hollywood films appeared to be selling to the viewers the idea that America was a paradise on earth. Italian cinema at this point of time tried to imitate Hollywood, going for big budget films shot on lo exotic locations like posh hotels and nightclubs and ocean liners. By the end of the 40s, filmmaking passed almost entirely into state control. But in the early stages, the fascist regime, instead of asserting totalitarian control over the medium, tried to promote artistically well-made films in a genuine attempt to offer aesthetic competition to Hollywood. There were also demands, which were not accepted, to use cinema for fascist propaganda. At this point of time, the conflict between aesthetically sound art cinema and formulaic genre vehicles or commercial films arose, with the government changing its policy to subsidize genre vehicles which were successful at the box office. This, when combined with the protection offered to film companies against American films, firmly established private enterprise in Italian cinema. But there were occasional attempts to abandon both populist themes and technical sophistication in favor of down-to-earth realistic themes and treatment. With the end of the war and the collapse of the fascist regime, neorealism asserted itself in a new atmosphere of freedom and creativity. But in 1948, 
The first post-war government reintroduced the fascist regime subsidies for films, which came out successful at the box office, thereby starving the new release films, which were less successful than a run-of-the-mill commercial films of badly needed government assistance. The term neorealism was first applied by film critic, scriptwriter, and filmmaker Antonio Petrangeli to Lucino Visconti's film Ossession, for which he was assistant director. Ossession or Obsession, uh, released in 1943, can be regarded as a proto neorealist film. Five years later, Visconti was able to realize the full potential of neorealism in La Terra Trema, The Earth Trembled which many film critics considered to be the perfect example for Italian neorealism. Interestingly, Petrangeli, who collaborated in the script for La Terra Trema, went on to become a director, whose films represented Italian cinema's move away from neorealism. Characteristics and Influence Although there were variations within the movement, Italian neorealism distinguished itself by a number of characteristics which can be considered the canons of the movement. In a sense, the neorealists were continuing a trend towards realism that had been initiated during the pre-war fascist period by directors like Alessandro Blasetti, Augusto Genina, and Francesco de Robertis. Blasetti's 1860, released in 1934, was certainly a major influence. The productions were mostly low budget and shot on location instead of in studios. The war had destroyed most of Italy's studios, which had been among the best in the world. So, it can perhaps be said that the directors of neorealist films were making a virtue out of necessity. With a few exceptions, the actors were non-professionals. This also kept costs low. Stylistically, the neorealist films were marked by an avoidance of neatly plotted stories in favor of a loose episodic structure in which events unfolded organically. There was no closure or neat ending in which all the loose ends were tied up and the problems resolved. In this, the neorealistic films stood in sharp contrast to Hollywood productions and much of popular Italian films. The neorealists also went against the grain by avoiding too much technicality in camera work, lighting and editing, which had been the hallmarks of Hollywood and much of Italian cinema till then, and opting for simple styles. Although the films had at least an outline of a plot like regular feature films, the narrative often resembled a documentary in its visual feel and settings. Ideologically, the objectives of neorealism were clear. In 1935, during the heydays of fascism, the anti-fascist journalist Leo Longinesi urged directors to go into the streets, barracks and train stations, which he pointed out was the only way an Italian cinema could be born. In portraying the lives of the working class and other underprivileged sections of society, neorealism accomplished this perfectly. Apart from shooting on location, introducing non-professional actors and improvisation in place of stylization, neorealism extensively employed local dialects instead of the standard language for dialogues. Neorealism was thus a reaction against both the prevailing form and content of Italian cinema. While introducing drastic innovations in the medium and rejecting the melodramatic cliched forms of expressions of commercial cinema, it seized the opportunities of the freedom of expression of the immediate post-fascist dispensation. It became patently political in offering a critical view of contemporary Italian society, in presenting social problems and in choosing to depict them broadly from the perspectives of the underprivileged. For many Italians, Neorealism represented the expression on real of the ideas of resistance to fascism. Roberto Rossellini, Vittorio Di Sica, and Lucchino Visconti were the triumvirate of Italian neorealism. Rossellini's Roma Sitta Aperta, Di Sica's Ladri di Biciclete, and Lucchino Visconti's La Terra Trema 
are considered to be the most representative films of the newer realist school. Rome Open City captured the tension and drama of Italy just before the end of the war when it was still under German occupation. The film faithfully depicted the struggle of the partisans, the militia which was formed to resist German occupation. Although the film is termed neorealist, Rossellini used studio sets extensively and deployed the lighting common in expressionist cinema. His editing also keeps close to the montage of the Russian masters like Eisenstein, whose works he had studied diligently. The plot follows a straightforward good versus evil line and the narration is melodramatic in places. Rossellini's next film, Paisan, released in 1946, set in Italy under the occupation of Allied forces, however, stuck faithfully to the neorealist canon with its documentary style narration episodic plot and cast of non-professional actors. Paisan is also credited with going beyond the neo-realist creed to depict a conflict of cultures and their eventual reconciliation. The Sika's Bicycle Thieves is an all-time classic in world cinema. Lucchino Visconti's life was as eventful as his films. He took an active part in the resistance against fascism and German occupation. The Italian communist theorist Antonio Gramsci was a great influence on his life and works. Although he had written the screenplay for Rossellini's Ossession, Visconti turned to theatre productions after the war and his first film had to wait till 1948. The Earth Trembled was an adaptation of a realist novel by the Italian fictionist Giovanni Verda. It is probably the most committed film to have come out of Italian neorealism and also the film which follows neorealist ideals to the letter. It has a non-professional cast. The characters speak in thick Sicilian accent. Visconti employed voiceover occasionally to translate the dialogues for non-Sicilian audiences. Many long sequences in the film mark it as a documentary on the daily life in the village called Achi Trezza. The film was the result of Visconti's intense efforts to investigate the life of Italy's rural poor. It tells the story of a poor fisherman in a Sicilian village who put up a bold but unsuccessful fight against the exploitative boat owners of the village. The ending of the film where the protagonist is shown determined to continue his struggle shows its divergence from the open-endedness of most neorealist films. Disika's Schiuscia, Shoe Shine, 1946, and Umberto the 1952, and Rossellini's Europa 51, 1952, are also considered highly significant contributions to neorealism. Along with these three, a number of other directors like Alberto Latuada, Michelangelo Antonioni, Luigi Zampa and Pietro Germi constituted the neorealist school which dominated Italian cinema in the decade between 1945 and 1955. Italian neorealism was a great influence on world cinema. It was championed by Andre Bazin, one of the most influential film critics of the time. Films like Bicycle Thieves, besides gay, it was a decisive influence on the new wave cinema of France, the cinema Nova of Brazil, the free cinema of Britain, the third cinema of Argentina and Egyptian neorealism. The influence can be seen in the Appu trilogy of Satyajit Roy and even in the Iranian offbeat cinema at the turn of the 21st century. Within Italy, the neorealist mode even after the decline of the movement, continued to attract directors who were fascinated by its aesthetic and ideological possibilities. The greatest historical role of Italian neorealism is in its being a model and inspiration for parallel and oppositional cinema against the commercialism of Hollywood and its indigenous varieties all over the world. Within Italy, neorealism was too intellectual for popular taste. Neorealist films grossed much less than commercial films of the time at the box office. Criticism against neorealism was not necessarily hostile. They came from several directions. 
while left wing reviewers and critics were impressed generally with the themes and technical innovations in the films, many of them felt that the films did not go far enough. They simply portrayed social situations without offering solutions or even taking an overt political line on the issues. On the other hand, from a purely aesthetic position, it was pointed out that the films were too empirical in their approach, portraying what is considered objective reality while refraining from looking into the minds of the characters. In fact, accepting the validity of this criticism, some of the neorealists moved on to a psychological approach after the influence of neorealism waned in the mid 50s. The opposition from the Catholic Church was more serious. The Church found the films too leftist for its taste. As the Church was still an influential institution in Italy at the time, it was easy to influence people against neorealism. The Catholic Center for Cinema, set up by the Church, started certifying films in its own way. The Church also set up more than 3,000 parish theatres in the Italian countryside, which strictly kept out neorealist films. Government policy also stood in the way of the success of neorealist films. In the mid-30s, during the fascist regime, the policy was to give subsidies to films which were successful at the box office, rather than to artistically well-made films. The successful films were all genre vehicles. With the end of fascism, the policy was revoked. But it was reinstated in 1948 with provisions more favorable to companies making successful commercial films. Although the neorealist films with their low budget and successful foreign runs which followed the critical acclaim they received managed to survive, they were always precariously placed in the market. As a movement, Italian neorealism was as powerful as the Soviet montage in influencing world cinema. Its historical importance lies in the fact that it was the first movement to reject the cinematic paradigms of Hollywood, which made entertainment the primary objective of cinema. It was also a movement which challenged the crass commercialization of the medium. In its insistence on producing an authentically Italian cinema, it is a model to many national cinemas in Asia, Africa and Latin America in the post-colonial period. Its low budget productions, non-professional casting, shooting on location and the use of local dialect also turned out to be guiding principles for cinema in many third world countries. Above all, its time of emergence is also significant. The end of the second world war marked the beginning of the process of decolonization across the world. Nationalist movements in the colonies were beginning to win their struggle against colonial rule. Although Italian neorealism as a movement could not be called committed cinema in its wider sense, in depicting the life of the working class and in discussing social problems, its politics was clear enough. The impact of neorealism can be judged by the fact that it continued to be a source of inspiration to many national cinemas across the world more than half a century after its eclipse as a movement. Here is a summary of the discussion on neorealism. Neorealism was a movement in Italian cinema which was active between 1945 and 1955. It explored new themes and introduced new techniques in Italian cinema. Italian neorealist films had a pervasive influence on the cinemas of many countries, especially in the third world. Some of the films of the movement have been recognized as all-time classics in world cinema. Neorealism attempted to free Italian cinema from the stranglehold of commercialism introduced by Hollywood films. Neorealism attempted to free Italian cinema from the stranglehold of commercialism introduced by Hollywood films and emphasized the depiction of the life of ordinary people and presentation of social problems. They were mostly shot on location with non-professional casting. Here are some assignments for you. Discuss briefly the historical background of Italian neorealist cinema. Assignment number two, describe the characteristics of Italian neorealism. Number three, give brief descriptions of any two Italian neorealist films. Here are some useful books for your reference. 
Carlo Telli and Marga Cotino Jones, A New Guide to Italian Cinema, New York, Palgrave Macmillan, 2007. Gino Moliterno, Historical Dictionary of Italian Cinema, Maryland, Scarecrow Press, 2008. Pierre Sodlin, Italian National Cinema, 1896-1996, London, Routledge, 1996. Christopher Wagstaff, Italian Neorealist Cinema, An Aesthetic Approach, Toronto, University of Toronto Press, 2007. Bert Cadullo, edited, Andre Bazang and Italian Neorealism, New York, Continuum, 2011. So that was Neorealism for you. So till we meet again for the next session, bye.